If you'd like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Also, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my content. It only takes a few seconds, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you. The Era of the Fighting Game It's hard to imagine what the arcade scene was like before Street Fighter II came along. One year prior, though, a fighting game was released that utilized digitized footage of actual actors to create a truly unique experience. No, I'm not talking about Mortal Kombat. I'm talking about Pit Fighter, the simultaneous three-player fighting game. What famous actor was considered for the starring role in this game? What were the various names given to this game before its release? Let's find out as we learn about the history of Pit Fighter. The year is 1989. Atari programmer and game designer Gary Stark is proposing something very different for his next arcade game. At the time, Atari was known for its family-oriented games. The family-oriented games included APB, Road Blaster, and Crystal Castles. It took a few meetings with Hidei Nakajima, who was the CEO of Atari, to get the green light. The concept was born out of the martial arts movie Bloodsport. Speaking of, the name they would use all throughout development was in fact Bloodsport, and it wasn't changed until just before the game was released. It actually went through several name changes, including Tough Enough, Blood Warriors, Prize Fighters, Arena of Death, and Masters of Buffness. There were even preliminary thoughts of getting Bloodsport actor Jean-Claude Van Damme to star in the game, but the idea went nowhere. Late in development on this video, I was able to speak to Mr. Stark regarding the Jean-Claude Van Damme rumors of him starring in the video game. Mr. Stark informed me that he had never heard those rumors, so they probably were just that, just rumors. They had received a video digitizer at Atari, and after testing it out, they were thoroughly impressed. They felt this was something they could really use to make an impression on the arcade scene. At the time, Mr. Stark was a big gym bunny, so he knew exactly where to look for people to star in his video game. The problem was, getting hired to work on a video game at that time was a bit strange, so Mr. Stark had to get business cards printed up that said Talent Scout to make himself appear more legit. After the talent was acquired, they attempted to film each person in front of a green screen performing the moves by themselves. This didn't work out well, so Mr. Stark took one for the team. He put on a green suit and let each person beat the living heck out of him. So each move you see being performed in the game was actually performed on Mr. Stark. Another innovative feature for a fighting game was the scaling effect which was used to zoom in and out of the playfield. This was pioneered by Sega and its super scalar coin ops such as Afterburner and Outrun. Pit Fighter is a three player simultaneous fighting game released in 1990 by Atari. You have your choice of three characters, all of which have different attributes Buzz, an ex pro wrestler with a lot of power moves, Ty, who is a kickboxing champion and is a tribute to Jean Claude Van Damme, right down to the character doing the splits. And finally, Kato, a third degree black belt. Rather than move side to side like a typical 2D beat em up, you also get to move up and down. You have a punch button, a kick button, and a jump button. If you press all three buttons at the same time, you perform your character's signature power move. After you win each match, your money is tallied and you are raised up on a forklift. Every third fight is a grudge match where you have to fight against a CPU clone of your character. You have to knock your opponent down three times to eliminate him. Be careful though, because if you get knocked down three times, you lose the fight. The game continues, but you don't get as much bonus money. There are plenty of opponents to face, including Southside Jim, Angel, Heavy Metal, Chain Man Eddie, And appearing in the cutscene after every few fights is the baddest of the baddies, the masked executioner, who is the final boss of the game. One thing the developer had from the inception of this game were the interactive environments. This game featured 10 different weapons, 
which is the highest for any sort of beat-em-up. The weapons include a wooden crate, a knife, a bar stool, and a motorcycle. People in the crowd will also hand you weapons, but if you get too close to the crowd, they will push you back into the arena. You can damage cars and also motorcycles. On certain levels, you'll see a green pill, which I assume is anabolic steroids, because after ingesting it, you will be invulnerable for about 10 seconds. If you make it through all of the opponents, you will be awarded the title of Pit Fighter Champion. You will also be awarded all of the monies and all of the honeys. The first thing you notice about the game is the incredible detail in all of those lovely digitized sprites. This wasn't the first game to use digitized sprites though. That would be 1983's Journey by Midway. Midway would also use digitized sprites in its arcade shooter, NARC. I think it's safe to say, though, that this was the first fighting game to use this concept. The game was a monster hit in the arcades, and at the time, nobody was complaining about the controls. It seems as of late, though, there have been a lot of negative reception to this game. Sure, it's not as polished as Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat, but at the time, it did what it did best, a straight-up button-smashing beat-em-up which is exactly what this YouTuber wanted. Let's check out all those conversions. And actually, there are some that are pretty good. The first one we're going to look at is the Spectrum version. Looking at it in still shots, it looks pretty good with large detailed sprites. However, as soon as the game is put in motion, you'll see why this is one of the worst conversions ever. The hit detection is way off and the speed is just too darn slow. Also, you only have one fire button as opposed to the arcade setup which uses three. This also really hinders the gameplay. To be honest, the music on the title screen is very well done. If you thought the Spectrum version was just a bit slow, then wait till you get a load of the Amstrad version. Looking almost identical to the Spectrum, but with one or two extra colors and about 50% less in the speed department. Who in their right mind thought this was a good enough game to release? I wouldn't let my grandma play this game and she has cataracts in both eyes. I would avoid this at all costs. Up next is the Super Nintendo version. When I was a young teen, I couldn't wait for this one to be released. The Genesis version was and still is one of my favorite versions of Pit Fighter to play. So with the graphics being just a little bit better on the Super Nintendo, I thought this would be the ultimate version. Not. The fine scrubs at THQ are back doing what they do best and that's screwing up arcade conversions. 95% of the speech is missing. 50% of your opponents are missing. All of the weapons are missing. And the final straw that broke the camel's back is you are only given one life with no continues. To be fair, the game is reasonably fast. The Sega Master System version is up next and this is the only version that scrapped the digitized sprites so everything is redrawn. It doesn't matter though, because the sprites have been shrunk by about 400%, meaning I had to go out and buy glasses just to play this game. You get to fight in a very sparse environment in front of a lifeless dull crowd with absolutely no weapons. The game does have some decent music though. The good old Commodore 64 version is up next. The game retains the digitized style, but everything is a bit blocky, so they are hard to make out. The colors in the game are drab and dreary, which also doesn't help when it comes to items blending in. This version does feature almost all of the weapons, so there is that. The controls are just the same, with only one fire button, which makes it really difficult to play. On the positive side, though, the game moves along at a fairly decent pace with some excellent music. The MS-DOS version looks pretty good, but rather than try to emulate the scaling effect found in the Atari ST and Amiga version, they chose to vertically stretch the sprites, which makes everything look just a bit off. Only one fire button is used, but the speed is pretty close to the arcade game. Now who in their right mind would have thought that the Game Boy version would be better than the 16-bit Super Nintendo version? Not me, folks, that's for sure. Now I'm not saying this is a good version but it is a lot better than the travesty that was found on the Super NES. The sprites are large in detail, but with such huge characters, the speed has taken a bit of a bump. The game runs at about 75% of the arcade speed, meaning it's just not very fun to play. Up next is the absolute best port of Pit Fighter running on a handheld, which is the Atari Lynx version. 
The reason this version is so good is because coder Al Baker had access to the arcade game source code and was able to convert it line by line. The sprites are large and detailed and easily recognizable. Almost everything from the arcade game is here, including all of the weapons. One thing that wasn't included though was all of the digitized speech, and that was only because the developer ran out of space. The gameplay and speed is almost identical to the arcade game. The Atari ST version is up next, and while it's a decent effort, it falls just a bit short. The graphics are very good, and it even attempts to emulate the scaling effect found in the arcade game. What lets it down though is the one button control scheme, and also the lack of speed. It does have some pretty good music though. The Amiga version is up next, and all in all it looks pretty good. The scaling effect has been replicated to a certain degree, and the characters are large and easily recognizable. This game even features some of the digitized speech found in the arcade game. Unfortunately, we have one button to use which really hinders the gameplay. The speed is fast, almost as fast as the arcade game. And finally, my absolute favorite version of Pit Fighter to play, which is the Sega Genesis version. Rather than try to replicate the size of the sprites, they shrunk everything down but still retained the digitized quality. Something else that was retained was the awesome controls. This plays exactly like the arcade game. All of the weapons have been included as well as the crowd interactions. Another big plus is that 99% of the digitized sounds and voices were included in this port. An absolute masterpiece if you are a fan of the arcade game. An arcade sequel, Pit Fighter 2 The Return of Chain Man Eddie was about 80% complete when it was cancelled by the higher ups at Atari. Mr. Stark informed me that there would have been 22 playable characters. To my knowledge, the game has not been dumped for use in MAME, but let's keep our fingers crossed. Another sequel was started for the Sega Genesis, simply titled Pit Fighter 2, but this time it featured six different fighters to select. Most of the enemies were new, including all new environments and weapons. Unfortunately, the game was never released. In 2004, Midway Arcade Treasures 2 was released for the Xbox and PlayStation 2. On this compilation, among other great Midway games, was a pixel-perfect version of Pit Fighter, thanks to it running under emulation. I'd like to give a big shout out to Pit Fighter creator Gary Stark for taking the time out to speak to me about the game. Thank you very much. And that wraps up my look at the arcade game Pit Fighter. This game gets a lot of flack, but it's still one of my favorite games to play when I just want some mindless action. If you like my videos and want to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Also, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my content. It's the only way my channel can grow. Thanks for watching.